today. Look again at the forests in some of the city. 200 years ago, those ridges were barren rock and sand dunes. The first trees were planted there in the 1880s, a century after De Anza planted his cross. Today, the Presidio is now under the protection of the National Park Service. And many of the historic military homes have been restored in the housing of local residents. It is a popular destination for hikes. Like movies, it is the location of the best for the magic. The special effects company that has unforgettable films like Star Wars, and the Jones series, Pirates of the Caribbean.
you're standing on the deck and you can feel it vibrate. You can feel it sway back and forth. You can tie it for each other. It's like a cord. And it makes you feel very small and uh, stand up looking up at those huge towers and listen to the whole thing going on. It's all inspiring. That way, by the way, came along before the bridge. John C. Fremont, soldier, explorer, and adventurer, made the entrance to San Francisco Bay. Okay, that was the only call that was discovered in California. To the north end of the Golden Gate Bridge, inside the office of San Francisco, you'll see a rocky point just below the bridge. That's Line Point, the other side of the Golden Gate's entrance, along the Thorn Point. Look again at the hills to the left of Line Point, the Marin Headlands. Spend an afternoon on the hiking trails there, and you might see deer or even bobcats. Climb to the top of Hawk Hill. A glorious view of the Golden Gate. Visit it in October, and you'll see magnificent beds of prey. Every fall, more than a hundred thousand dogs, eagles, and fawns soar over the on the migration south. Now, let's all take a moment to enjoy this magnificent panorama. And if the sun is out, you'll see sails dotting the bed. In addition to its other qualities, the bay is a challenging playground. Sailors and windsurfers alike. Well, that area between Chrissy Field and Golden Gate Bridge and Four Point has become one of the top windsurfing locations in the world. It's caused by the winds that just howl through the Golden Gate. The mix of waters trying to force their way into the harbor and also out simultaneously. The more churned up, the better. But it's not for every Jersey. Twenty-five minutes. Huh? Twenty-five minutes Going back. Now we are out on the bay where the water can become choppy and treacherous. In the 1850s, a number of lighthouses were built along the California coast to help guide boats into the bay. Three of the lighthouses are still here in the bay. But even with lighthouses, buoys, and fog horns, navigating the narrow harbor entrance is no easy feat. Thick fog, shifting currents, and only old captains resulted in shipwrecks. In 1901, the wreck of the steamer City of Rio de Janeiro was the worst local maritime disaster ever recorded. The steamer usually transported Chinese immigrants across the Pacific. But in February 1901, there was an American diplomat aboard. He was returning to attend President William McKinley's inaugural ball in Washington, D.C. The ship was already two days late when it arrived to the bay. So Captain William Ward decided to proceed through the open gate in the heavy fog. In the early morning hours, the Rio de Janeiro struck the rocks. The ship did not have watertight bulkheads, and it sank in a mere 10 minutes. Many of the 210 passengers of the ship were below decks and couldn't escape. 128 lives were lost.
The sea can be dangerous, but you might be grateful that we are out on the water right now. Because one thing San Francisco is famous for is surviving earthquakes. Look at the city sky. The Great Quake of 1906 began at 12 minutes past 5 a.m. <laughs> In 